the next point. We should ensure that whatever we see is clear. That means work is being done and we can see that it is in opposite direction. Hello, my learners at home. You are welcome once again to another segment of the Kaduna State Ministry of Education Radio Television e-learning program. I remain A.Y. Rickson. The subject is literature in English for the senior secondary school. The topic, unseen poetry and prose. But before we go on the discussion, I want us to remind ourselves of what, we, of what we did in our last lesson. We treated an African text titled The Lion and the Joel. We saw how Baroka, who happens to be the belle of the village, tricked Sidi, who happens to be the Joel, to marry her. For today's topic, unseen poetry and prose, this is an aspect of literature that students find it difficult to answer. Why? Because they are coming in contact with the passages for the first time. So under this, we are going to discuss the stages for better for you to be able to understand answering questions on unseen prose and poetry you, there are stages that one needs to follow. Don't forget that we have genre of literature, which includes poetry, prose, and drama. This aspect is difficult because you don't go through it, you don't study it, you only come across it in the exam hall. Unlike the aspect where you have text to read, studied before your examination. So we are going to see these stages. Listen carefully, get your jotters, jot down the points so that you can read in due cost. What is unseen poetry? Unseen poetry is the one that you won't have seen or studied until you open the examination paper. Unseen poetry is one of the most difficult parts of literature. Part of the reasons for its difficulty is because of the lack of adequate knowledge of poetry passage by the students. A good analysis of the unseen poetry follows the following stages. For you to be able to analyze these passages, take note of these stages. One. Begin by asking yourself these questions about the poem. What is the poem about? What is it really about? In answering the first question, you only need to address the simple surface meaning of the poem. Who is narrating the poem? What are they describing? If the poem tells some kind of story, what happens? In answering the second question, you need to think more deeply about the poet's intention. What attitude does he or she have towards the subject matter of the poem? How is the reader intended to react? How would you describe the theme or themes of the poem? Does the poem have some kind of moral or message. Stage two, develop your response to the poem by looking in more detail at what different parts of the poem mean. And by looking at the poem style, identify important literary and linguistic features and consider how this contributes to the overall effect and to the meaning the poem has. Key aspects to consider include one, form and structure. 
form and structure. How has the poem been organized? Does it conform to an identifiable poetic form? Examples, sonnet, lyric. Two, poetic voice. What tune does the poem have? Bitter, playful, ironic, or regretful? If the poem is in the first person, has the poet created a persona who happens to be the narrator who is clearly distinct from the author? If so, what view does the poet have of his character? And what view is the reader intended to have? Sympathetic, disapproving. another future to consider, which is the diction or lexis. What general points can be made about the lexis of the point? Is it formal or informal? Simple or complex? What kind of mood or atmosphere does the diction create? Are there any other patterns in the diction such as groups of words with similar connotations? Are there individual words and phrases that are especially powerful or significant? Are there words that contrast with each other? Four, imagery. Does the poem make use of metaphors, similes, or personification? How do the comparison work? And what effect do they have? Are there any light between the images used? Five, phonology, which has to do with the sound. Does the poem have regular rhythm or meter? Are there places where the rhythm changes? If so, why? Is there any use of devices such as alliteration, assonance, and onomatopoeia. Having seen the stages that one needs to analyze to be able to answer the questions correctly, we are going to examine some model examination questions of the unseen poetry. We are going to consider some points and then questions under each of the points. Point number one. I will read the point. And so it came to pass, many seasons after the death of one savior, that a new crop of saviors, armed with party program, came cascading down our rivers of hope, poised for poisoning of our Atlantic reservoir. They sought out the foxes in the family, to whom they gave their 30 pieces of silver in local and foreign exchange for the secrets of the passage way into the castle of our skins. I will take it again. And so it came to pass, many seasons after the death of our Savior, that a new crop of saviors, armed with party program, came conceding down our rivers of hope, Poised for poisoning of our Atlantic reservoir, they sought out the foxes in the family to whom they gave their 30 pieces of silver in local and foreign exchange for the secrets of the passage way into the castle of our skins, written by Fusho Ayejina. Now the questions. Question number one says, the subject matter of the poem is dash. This has always been objective questions. So you have options to choose. 
A. M. Armed robbery. B. Education. C. Religious intolerance. D. Leadership and politics. Now, looking at the question which has to do with the subject matter, the correct option here is D. Leadership and politics. Question number two. The expression poised for poisoning of our Atlantic reservoir is dash. A, personification. B, simile. C, assonance. D, synodotch. The correct answer here is C, which is assonance. Question number three. The expression 30 silver is a struck and dash a allusion b rhyme c meter d personification looking at it very well the correct answer there is a allusion question number four line six illustrate the use of dash a simile b hyperbole C, personification. D, metaphor. Looking at the options, the correct answer there is D, which is metaphor. Question number five. The poem expresses the following themes. A, the cell of Jesus Christ. B, fruitless journey. C, economics exchange. D, corrupt leader. Looking at the options, the correct answer there is D, which is corrupt leader. Having seen the first poem, we are going to take the second point. The earth is ours to plow and plant. The hole is her barber, the dibble her dimple. Out with mattocks and matches, bring calabash trays and rocking baskets. Let sweet which swells out root relieve heavy heaps of their turbulent burdens by Nii Osudare. The earth is ours to plow and plant. The hole is her barber. The dibble her dimple. Out with mattocks and matches. Bring calabash trays and rocking baskets. Let sweet which swells at root relieve heavy heaps of their turbulent bodies. Now the questions. One, the subject matter of the poem is A, farming, B, mechanized agriculture, C, preservation of the earth, D, Barbie. Looking at the options, the correct answer there is a, which is farming. Question number two. The expression plow and plant suggest A, fishing, B, haircut, C, technology, D, farming. The correct answer here is farming. Question number three. The word Baba in line two suggests a. Hairstylist, B. Gardeners, C. Farmers, D. Intellectuals. The correct answer here is C. Farmers. Question number four. Stanza two focuses on A. Bush following, B. Clearing, C. Harvesting, D. Fertilizer application. The correct answer to number four is C, which is harvesting. Question number five. The expression, the whole is her baba, is an example of A, metonymy, B, simile, C, onomatopoeia, D, personification. The correct answer there is A, metonymy. Poem number three, and he was rich, yes, richer than a king, 
and admirably schooled in every grace. In fine, we thought that he was everything to make us wish we were in his place. So on we walked and waited for the light. And when without the meat and cured the bread, and Richard Corey, one calm summer night, went home and put a bullet through his head. Edwin Alicton Robinson. The questions. One, the person talked about in the poem appears to have all but A, riches, B, security, C, happiness, D, the company of Richard Curry. The correct answer there is happiness. The rhyme scheme of the poem is A, a, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, which has to do with the sound, the rhyming, how it ends. B, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, C, G, E, G, E, F, D, F, D, D, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Looking at the options given, the correct answer is A. Question number three. In the end, the we in the poem can be said to be A, indignant, B, indifferent, C, disillusion, D, betrayed. The correct answer there is disillusioned. Question number four. Line six of the poem can be said to be A, oxymoron. B, metaphor. C, hyperbole. D, inuado. The correct answer there is B, which is metaphor. Question number five. Line two of the poem suggests that the person talked about A, was well educated. B, attended the best schools. C, attended schools in Grace Country. D, had good social manner. Looking at the options given, the correct answer there is D, which is had good social manner. Question number six. In terms of arrangement of ideas, the poem is A, climatic, B, Anti-heroic, C, anticlimactic, D, heroic. The correct answer there is A, climactic. Poem number four. Daily our eyes are born again to sorrows wider than the world. The cooking pot is home of spiders and lizards are landlords of the kitchen. Affirming the dead of fire in countless notes who brave the marketplace, drains paws and heart for a spoonful of sold by Ogaga Ifowodo. The questions. Question number one. The image evoked by the poem is that of A. Struggle B. Disappointment C. Privation D. Christianity The correct answer there is C. Privation Question number two. Line two illustrates the use of A. Hyperbole B. Irony, C. Epigram, 
D, personification. The correct answer there is A, hyperbole. Question three, in line one, the poet uses A, analogy, B, irony, C, fable, D, allusion. The correct answer there is D, allusion. Question number four, the idea drains pause and heart is an example of A, metaphor, B, paradox, C, metonymy, uh, D, meiosis. The correct answer there is A, which is metaphor. Question number five, the poem depicts an atmosphere of A, despair, B, acrimony, C, regrets, D, meditation. The correct answer to number five is A, despair. Having seen poetry, we are going to talk about the unseen prose. If you remember, we said the topic is unseen poetry and prose. It's just like the poetry. Unseen prose is the one that you won't have seen. Study until you open the examination paper. So unseen prose are literary extracts dedicated to any author. It is used to test the knowledge of literary skills in students. When attempting question on unseen prose passage, that is passage you have never seen before, you will probably have to compare to the other extract, which may again be unseen, or from text you have studied. A good way to start is to read the extra once or twice and develop an overview of the passage. Read with the following in mind. One, what are the purpose of the extract? For example, is the writer portraying character or describing a place or a piece of action? Read the passage, highlight the key things if you find that helpful, and then read the passage with the key points enumerated above in mind. As you read the passage, glance through the questions. Let the question guide your reading, and this will help you formulate good critical approach. What is narrative viewpoint? Is the narrative first person or third person? What kind of relationship exists between narrator and reader? Is the reader addressed directly? What kind of feelings and attitude does the writer seem to be encouraging in the reader? Are characters portrayed sympathetically or unsympathetically? If a setting is described, are the impressions you form of it generally positive or negative. In the summary, prose is simply understood when it is broken into four main parts as follows. Narrative, who is the narrator? Setting, what does the setting contribute to the passage? Characterization, how are the characters presented? For instance, how are they presented in terms of clothing, statues? Four, imagery. What kind of imagery is used here? You can explore some literary devices such as the use of symbolism in objects or in nature, and etc. So having seen the poem passages or collected poems that we read and then answered questions, this is a prose passage. We are going to read the prose passage and then answer the questions. But I do mind, I mind very much, I am sorry, said Cooper, with composure. The fact is, I simply couldn't wait till you come back. I wonder you didn't open my letters as well, Cooper, or moved, smiled at his chief exasperation. Oh, that is not quite the same thing. After all, I couldn't. You mind my looking at your newspapers? There is nothing private in them. I very much object to anyone reading my paper before me. He went to the pile. There were nearly 30 numbers there. I think it is extremely impertinent of you. They are all mixed up. We can easily put them in order, said Cooper, joining him at the table. Don't touch them, cried Mr. Warburton. I say, it's childish to make a scene about a little thing like that. How they speak to me like that. 
oh, go to hell, said Cooper, and he flung out of the room. The questions. The passage is an example of A, dramatic prose, poetic prose, C, pro, uh, prosaic dialogue. The correct answer there is A, dramatic prose. From the passage, it can be inferred that Copper is to dash to Mr. Warburton of A, friend, B, superior, C, subordinate, D, relative. The correct answer there is C. Three, the dominant mode in the passage is A, anger, surprise, hate, regret. The correct answer there is A, which is anger. Four, Mr. Warbington can be described as wicked, A, indifferent, B, vindictive, fastidious. The correct answer there is D. The point of view used in the passage is A, third person, B, first person, C, third person, D, stream of consciousness. The correct answer there is C, third person, objective. Number six, Cooper's final reaction shows that he is A, terrible, sad. Terrible, sad, not interested. Not interested, the correct answer there is C. So having seen that, we are going, I will now give you assignment. Try to do this assignment. Read the poem carefully and answer the question that follows. Read the poem carefully and answer the questions that follow. I am the helpless fish frying in your bowl of cooking oil. You lean against the kitchen walls, smiling with thought of coming feast, but nature in time will call. You rather account squatting or your heels. Your hunger returns with new demands, and I will not be there to feed the need of recurrent appetite by coffee. Are you do who? The questions. The theme of this poem is, you have the options there. Number two, I am the helpless fish. In line one, denotes the use of, you have the options to choose the correct answer. Feed the needs is an example of, you have the options there. The, the tune of this poem is, you have five options to choose the correct answer. Number five, this poem is in the form of A. Ballad, B, a sound, C, panegyric poem, D, a dramatic monologue. With this, we've come to the end of this lesson. I remain your literature teacher, Mrs. A.Y. Rickson. In case you want to meet me or contact me through this number, 080-83-97-3402. I will take it again, 080-83-97-3465. Stay safe, keep learning till we meet in our next lesson. Goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.